Hello again. This time I'll start explaining what RDF is, um, and then I try to give you some examples to get the ideas uh, behind to get the idea behind it and why it's quite useful. Now I keep making these mistakes. Sometimes I say RDF stands for Resource Description Framework. Sometimes I says I say it stands for you know the F is actually for format rather than framework. Well, here I'm using uh, a few slides from. A, presenta a presentation done by Larissa Soldatova, a lecturer at Brunel University uh, in London, UK. So she, because she's an expert, will uh, use her uh, 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 um, slides and stick to the framework rather than format. So RDF from now on stands for Resource Description Framework. Now, it's a language. RDF is a language. It's a data model. It's not a data format. Yes, and it's there to represent resources. What are resources? Or what's a resource? Well, a resource can be anything. A person, a book, a car, a computer, a machine, planet Earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, anything you can think of can be a resource. Although in our context here, we speak about uh, uh, web resources, but in general it can be anything. Uh, when we say web resources, we mean, for example, anything. For example, anything that can be located via a URL. Yes, we spoke about URLs in the last video. Now, basically, in RDF, whenever we want to describe a resource, the basic idea or the basic building block is to have a statement of the form of a triple IE. We can describe anything using one statement that has three parts that's why it's called a triple remember this that we want to use triples from now on and then uh, one nice idea behind using RDF or behind using triples is that data integration becomes very easy if people want to share their data go back to my first video or go back to uh, the sparkle book that I was speaking about and if you go to page the, the book is in between my hands now so if you go to, to chapter 2 and uh, if you go to page number uh, 20 in there, you will find a nice example about uh, airline comparison sites and why sharing data in a uh, 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 standard format is very useful. Go back to that example or my first video of this series and you understand why it can be very useful. So the idea is data integration and data sharing. Now, I'm sorry. <coughs> So, just a quick overview, it's a recommendation from W3C, it's a data model, um, it was originally used for metadata, for web resources, and then was generalized for other applications, it's universal, machine readable, uh, exchange format, so it's an only simple text format, universal means it can be used anywhere by anyone, and usually, these tri the triples we spoke about are actually graphs you know in, in mathematical graphs where we have vertices and edges or nodes and edges yet yeah, all of those all of the triples are actually or essentially graphs as we are going to see remember we are going to come to these things in my upcoming videos now just to motivate I'll give you a simple example imagine when we have the normal relational data tables whenever we have our tables we have you know columns and rows and then whenever a column meets a row that we have a value over there well we can use that as the idea behind the triple so for, for that for a row we can use that as a subject for a column we can use that as a property and for the value we can use that as our object so the idea here becomes instead of having multiple rows and multiple columns we can have everything every value in that in a table like this in a triple where we can use subject property value this is exactly what the triple is or the idea behind the triples is so in triples we have subject trip uh, I'm sorry subject property value or what they call is subject predicate and object so just idea subject predicate object or subject property subject property value and this is just to convert or transform from relational data to RDF data so from tuples instead of having tuples so I can say for example if this uh, table is about individuals about people we can say for, if you have for, for example here names you know date of birth uh, let's say for example uh, title job title 
place of birth, country of birth, etc., and nationality, etc., then we can have that as a tuple. So we can say, for example, uh, uh, Alex Higgins, and then date of birth, da da da, place of birth, da da da, nationality, da da da. That's a tuple, you know, a long, a long tuple. Whereas we can have it in a triple. So, for example, we say we can say Alex Higgins has a property. I'm sorry, has a property date of birth value is and we give date of birth and then another line now another triple Alex Higgins again the same subject Alex, Alex Higgins has property uh, place of birth and then we give city Alex Higgins has nationality and we give nationality and so on and so forth so instead of having a table like this or in tuples we can have them in triples and this is a standard format imagine imagine if one asks you to sort of merge different tables from different databases from different places in the world one table has 50 columns, another table has 20 columns, a third table has 90 columns. How can you merge these tables? It's virtually impossible because they have different structure, yes? But if we represent them as triples, then they will all have the same structure because all triples have the same structure. Subject, predicate, object or subject, property, value. And using that, we can actually merge them. In fact, for using triples and the semantic web, we do not have to merge them. If we convert the data we have in normal relational database tables, if we convert them into, RD, into RDF into triples, then we can make them available online and we don't have to physically bring them to wherever we are. We can just access them very easily and very nicely as long as they are made available online. And we'll come to that. If you don't uh, believe this, then uh, watch the videos and then please go back and watch my sparkle tutorial and there you can see that we can actually access data which is available online as triples or as rdf <coughs> now remember that any relation data data can be represented as triples as uh, uh, subject properties and values for the row and for the column or for the value as you can see from the figure here and this figure apparently larissa has taken from this website here from this presentation over here now we move on we mentioned before that we have a triple and we have subject property value so we can have a subject for example Tim has a phone number has a property called phone number and the value of that phone number is this yes so that's the idea of the triples just quickly and then in remember in so formally this is called subject predicate and object or subject property value so a subject and predicate usually are URIs and therefore the value we can use a literal value i.e. we can have a certain value whereas for subject predicate remember this please remember this please subject and predicate or subject and property can you can be URIs we'll come to that later on because these are sort of uh, 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 the part of the resource that we are trying to describe now remember we mentioned that all triples are graphs so if we have plenty of triples about Tim for example he has a phone number has has title has address has work title or job title then basically we can ha have that as a node edge node node edge node node edge node and then if we have another person called John and he knows Tim so we have a relationship or a property between them knows for example John has friend Tim or John knows Tim then that's another node and this is another edge or another vertex uh, I'm sorry another edge in the graph so vertex vertex or node edge vertex edge vertex and so on and so forth I hope that makes sense I hope you are familiar with mathematical graphs this is another RDF graph just quickly these are all triples so we have a city called Leipzig or Leipzig it has longitude that value latitude that value um, area code that value and then located in somewhere has mayor this individual here and this individual now is actually mayor of so you can see these two properties are opposite of each other and then he has property maybe date of birth or born in this state here and he's a member of some other party and so on and so forth and the country is germany so you can see that these are actually triples because you have subject predicate value or subject property value likewise here subject property value and these are actually nodes in the graph as you can see or vertices as some people like to call it in the graph this is a vertex this is a vertex and this is an edge and this is a vertex this is a vertex and this is an edge I hope that makes sense enough talking I'm going to stop here now uh, just to uh, you know not to make the video too long so it becomes boring and I'll continue in my upcoming video please stay tuned and move on and watch my next video thanks, for, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time